We're now going to introduce the notion of Legendre symbols, a function whose values are somehow related to what numbers are or are not quadratic residues modulo a base. But which bases are we going to be working with? We observed already that modulo and odd prime, determining which numbers are or are not quadratic residues is a bit simpler. Half of the non-zero residues are quadratic residues and half are not. With that in mind, we're going to define the following uh, construction. If p is an odd prime and n is any integer, the Legendre symbol is a function of both the integer and the odd prime. Given by this, if p is a factor of n, in other words, if n is equivalent to 0 modulo p, the Legendre symbol is 0. If n is not equivalent to 0 but is a quadratic residue mod p, it spits out 1. And if n is a quadratic non-residue modulo p, it spits out a minus 1. Be very, very careful when first working with these things. We are not writing fractions. This is what's called an abuse of notation, using notation for something that already means something else in a different context. This is really a common error to make, but we are working in integer number theory. Everything has to be an integer. So since there aren't any fractions in anything we're doing, the symbol isn't really ambiguous. Okay? We do have some notation for quotients that also looks like a fraction, but those are square brackets and this is a parenthesis. So in the context of integer number theory, when you see this parenthesis around what appears to be a fraction, it's actually the Legendre symbol. How do you compute it as a function of both arguments? If the odd prime, which is on the bottom, is a factor of the number on top, it spits out zero. If, however, the top is a non-zero quadratic residue modulo the odd prime on bottom, then it takes the value 1, and if the number on top is a quadratic non-residue modulo the odd prime on bottom, it takes the value minus 1. So observe, the only possible values for this Legendre symbol are 0, 1, and minus 1. Well, we'd better work through some examples to get accustomed to this new notation. For example, we've computed that 9 is a quadratic residue modulo any base. So the Legendre symbol 9 over p is equal to 1 for any odd prime p except for p equals 3. Since 3 is a factor of 9, 9 is actually equivalent to 0 modulo p. So the, the Legendre symbol 9 over 3 is actually 0 instead of 1. But modulo any other odd prime, 9 is a non-zero quadratic residue, and therefore the Legendre symbol 9 over p would be equal to 1. 5 is a quadratic residue mod 11. Therefore, the Legendre symbol 5 over 11 is equal to 1. 5 is not a quadratic residue modulo 13, so the Legendre symbol 5 by 13 is equal to minus 1. 2 and 6 aren't even odd primes. 6 isn't a prime. 2 is a prime, but it's not odd. So the Legendre symbol 5 over 2 or the Legendre symbol 5 over 6 don't even have a value. They're simply not defined. This is another common mistake. The number on bottom must be an odd prime or this symbol doesn't exist at all. Let's establish our first results studying Legendre symbols. First up, suppose p is an odd prime and n inverse is equivalent to m modulo p then these two Legendre symbols take the same value. In other words, they're either both 1, or they're both 0, or they're both minus 1. But since n inverse is equivalent to m, they both have inverses modulo p. But to have an inverse modulo p means you are relatively prime to p. So these two Legendre symbols are not 0. So hopefully they're either both equal to 1, or they're both equal to minus 1. Let's assume the Legendre symbol on the left is equal to 1. In other words, n is a quadratic residue modulo p. Then we'd like to be able to prove so is its inverse m. Since n is a quadratic residue mod p, there is an integer x so that x squared is equivalent to n mod p. That's the definition of being a quadratic residue. Since n is relatively prime to p, that means x squared is, since they're equivalent to each other. Since x squared is not divisible by the prime p, neither is the original number x. So since x squared is relatively prime to p, x is also relatively prime to p. So if x is relatively prime to p, it has an inverse, let's call it y. 
Well, exponents behave as they are supposed to. So y squared would be x inverse squared. That's the same thing as x squared inverse, but x squared was equivalent to n. So y squared is equivalent to n inverse mod p. In other words, it's equivalent to m mod p. So therefore, m is also a quadratic residue mod p. So having assumed that the Legendre symbol n over p was equal to one, the Legendre symbol m over p must also be equal to one and therefore they're equal to each other. But we can do this conversely as well. If I suppose the Legendre symbol m over p were equal to one, we can do all of this work again. Since m inverse is equivalent to n, it would really just be equivalent to starting off this work, switching places of m and n. So if this symbol is one, so is that one. And we've already shown if this symbol is one, so is that one. And we know neither of them is zero. So either they're both one or they're both the other possible value of negative one. Okay, another result about Legendre symbols. If P is an odd prime and N is relatively prime to P, then the inverse of the Legendre symbol N over P is the Legendre symbol of N inverse. The Legendre symbol is an integer. It's either one, zero, or minus one. So that left side really does just refer to traditional exponentiation. Now, if n over p is equal to 1, then n is a quadratic residue mod p. But as we saw before, n inverse would also be a quadratic residue mod p. So if this left is 1 inverse, then on the right, we just have a 1. Conversely, if n is a quadratic non-residue, in other words, this symbol is minus 1, negative 1 to the negative first power is also negative 1. But if this symbol is negative one, that means n is a quadratic non-residue mod p. And from the previous slide, therefore so is its inverse, and the right-hand side would also be negative one because the Legendre symbol n inverse over p, if n inverse is not a quadratic residue, would spit out the value of minus one. So from the previous slide, what we really want to claim is that exponents sort of factor in and out or distribute in and out of the Legendre symbol notation n over p inverse is the same thing as n inverse over p. We did note have to assume that n and p were relatively prime. If n is divisible by p, this symbol would be zero. Zero to the negative first doesn't exist. But if n isn't relatively prime to p, then it doesn't have an inverse mod p, and therefore this top number wouldn't exist either. Now here's really what we wanted to prove using that previous discussion about inverses. For any odd prime p, the Legendre symbol is completely multiplicative as a function of the top argument. In other words, the Legendre symbol mn over p is just equal to the Legendre symbol m over p times the Legendre symbol n over p. Now, again, take a minute and observe, we are not talking about fractions. A lot of students look at this and they say, duh, that's how fractions work. First of all, it's not. If these were simply fractions, this would give you a p squared in the denominator. But also, we don't know that the Legendre symbol has this property. We have to actually prove it. So suppose one of the two numbers m or n is actually divisible by p. Well, then so would the product mn. Also, vice versa, if p is a factor of mn, then since p is a prime, it must be a factor of one of the two numbers or possibly both. In other words, if any one of these three values is equal to zero, because for example, p is a factor of n, well, if p is a factor of n, then it's a factor of mn. So if this is zero, so is that, in which case both sides are zero. Similarly, if p is a factor of m, then it's a factor of mn. So if this is zero, so is that. But also, if p is a factor of mn, in other words, the left-hand side is zero, then p must be a factor of at least one of m or n. In other words, one of these must be zero and everything checks out. So let's suppose that Everything up here is relatively prime to p, so none of these Legendre symbols are equal to zero. So we're going to go case by case according to whether m and n are quadratic residues mod p or whether they aren't. The first and easiest case to consider is let's suppose m and n are both non-zero quadratic residues mod p. So both Legendre symbols are equal to one. Well then, since m and n are both quadratic residues, I can find integers that square to be equivalent to them mod p. So let's suppose x squared is equivalent to m and y squared is equivalent to n modulo p. Well, x, y squared would then work out to be exactly mn mod p. Therefore, 
Mn is a quadratic residue modulo p, and therefore the Legendre symbol is equal to 1, and we get 1 is equal to 1 times 1, which thankfully is true. So if both m and n are quadratic residues mod p, well then everything checks out. So let's continue. Now let's suppose one of the two values m and n is a quadratic residue mod p and the other is a quadratic non-residue. Well, without loss of generality, let's go ahead and assume that m is a quadratic residue and n is a quadratic non-residue. Now we've assumed that mn is relatively primed p, so that Legendre symbol is either plus one or minus one. In order for our claim to be true, we want it to be the product of those other two we've already declared, so we want to show that mn is not a quadratic residue modulo p. So let's assume to the contrary that it is a quadratic residue modulo p. So I was able to find some integer so that x squared is equivalent to mn mod p. Since m was assumed to be relatively prime to p, there must be an inverse of it. But also, the Legendre symbol m inverse over p is simply the inverse of the Legendre symbol m over p. Since m over p had value 1, so is m inverse over p. In other words, the Legendre symbol y over p is also equal to 1. Which means there is something whose square is equivalent to y. If y is a non-zero quadratic residue modulo p, and y is the same as n inverse, then I can find a z squared equivalent to m inverse mod p. But then we can do the following. x times z squared. So x was the number whose square is equivalent to mn, and z is an integer whose square is equivalent to m inverse. So when I square this, I can cancel out these m's and get just n left behind. So xz is now an integer whose square is equivalent to n modulo p. But that would give us that the Legendre symbol n over p is equal to 1, which contradicts our assumption that it was equal to minus 1. So when one of the two values is a quadratic residue and the other is not, our desired claim also holds. So where are we right now in our theorem? p is an odd prime. This is what we are trying to show for any m and n. We have established it's true if any one of the three values is a multiple of p. If both m and n are non-zero quadratic residues, everything works out. If one of them is a quadratic residue and one of them is a quadratic non-residue, then everything works out. So the only case left to consider is what if both m and n are quadratic non-residues modulo p? In which case, both of these Legendre symbols are equal to negative 1. Then what we want to show is that the value on the left-hand side is positive 1. In other words, we want to show that m times n is a quadratic residue modulo p. Okay, so let's finish this up. We assume that both m and n are quadratic non-residues modulo p. p is an odd prime. So the complete residue system, take out 0, contains half quadratic residues and half quadratic non-residues. N is relatively prime to P, so if I were to multiply everything in here, I'd get another reduced residue system modulo P. But observe, the standard complete residue system mod P take out zero is really the same thing as a reduced residue system mod P. So multiplying this by N gives me another reduced residue system mod P, and therefore it's half quadratic residues and half quadratic non-residues. So here's our function. Take this set multiply term by term by the number n. Okay, so f of k is equal to nk for any element of the standard reduced residue system mod p is a bijection, okay, because it sends one reduced residue system to another. So for any value in the standard reduced residue system so that it is a quadratic residue, since n is not a quadratic residue modulo p, if a is and n is not, we already know that everything will work out, and a n, the Legendre symbol, would be this times this, which would be minus 1. So any quadratic residue a is mapped by this function to our quadratic non-residue a n. So all the quadratic residues in the original reduced residue system get mapped to the quadratic non-residues down here. But the map is bijective. Half of the things in each are residues versus non-residues. So the half 
that our quadratic residues up here got mapped exactly to the half that our quadratic non-residues down this way. Therefore, the converse must also hold. The quadratic non-residues in the top half must be mapped to the quadratic residues in its range down here. So quadratic non-residues in the domain are bijectively mapped to the quadratic residues in the range. M, by assumption, was a quadratic non-residue. So if I multiply it by N, the resulting product must be a quadratic residue modulo P. So having assumed that N is a non-residue and M is a quadratic non-residue, the product MN is actually a quadratic residue mod P. So our desired product formula works in all possible cases. So let's talk about what we've done so far. For any odd prime P and integers M and M, the Legendre symbol essentially factors as follows. So we can say things like the Legendre symbol 20 over seven is just flat out equal to five over seven times the Legendre symbol four over seven. Four is definitely a quadratic residue mod seven because two squared is just equal to four. So the Legendre symbol four over seven is definitely equal to one. So therefore the Legendre symbol 20 over seven is just equal to the Legendre symbol five over seven which means, well, they're both not zero because seven isn't a factor of either. So either both sides are equal to one or both sides are equal to minus one. In other words, one of these numbers being a quadratic residue mod seven would immediately imply the other is. So 20 is a quadratic residue mod seven if and only if five is. We don't immediately know whether 20 is or isn't a quadratic residue mod seven, but if we can determine whether one of those two values is a quadratic residue mod seven, then we'll immediately know the other one as well. So if we have two Legendre symbols of the same base, not being zero and being equal. So I have two Legendre symbols of the same base and either they're both one or they're both minus one. You interpret that as saying, both of the upper arguments are quadratic residues or they are both quadratic non-residues. You still have to figure out which one holds, but either they're both quadratic residues or they're both quadratic non-residues. If I had two Legendre symbols of the same base and neither is zero and they're not the same value, well then one of them must be positive one and one of them must be negative one. In other words, one of the two upper values is a quadratic residue and the other is a quadratic non-residue. You still have to determine which is which, but at least you know that one is a quadratic residue and one is not. So if you can determine one of them, you will automatically determine the other. 